Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome my friends and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. If you're feeling charitable, please smash that subscribe button and the like button. And please do follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome to the DCEU Extra where heroic Hollywood and that god Umberto Gonzalez has another scoop for us and he's done a special video on YouTube and we are going to give it a listen. Is it possible that this is final confirmation that we're finally going to see Zack Snyder's Justice League and they're about to release the Snyder Cut? Let's take a listen to this. We've all seen plenty of rumors and theories about Zack Snyder's version of Justice League, but we recently learned new information that proves the fabled Snyder Cut may end up getting released at some point. But before we reveal why, let's look at the journey so far. After Zack Snyder left Justice League following a family tragedy, Josh Whedon was brought on board to help finish the DC team-up movie. The Avengers director oversaw completion of the film, adding in his signature light comedic tone and trimmed the adventure down to a two-hour runtime. Most recently, cinematographer Fabian Wagner claimed that the studio even changed the color palette of the film after Snyder's exit. Unfortunately, Justice League was met with a disappointing critical reception and also made a disappointing $657 million at the box office, reportedly losing Warner Brothers $60 million. This ultimately geared a number of fans into action as they created the Release the Snyder Cut campaign, calling for the studio to reveal the director's original version of the film. While it's easy to focus on the negative side of the fan movement, which has harassed Warner Brothers and DC executives in the past, it's important to note that the campaign has also managed to do some good. In the past few years, it's raised over $150,000 for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Folks, to their credit, that's worth applauding. Surprisingly, there's been a number of people connected to the film in some way that claim they've seen the near-mythical Snyder Cut, which has only added to the hype surrounding it. Those who have seen it have praised the alternate version. And, in an interview with Screen Rant, stunt coordinator Eunice Huthart says her colleagues called the film, quote-unquote, absolutely golden. Fan-favorite director Kevin Smith also explained that to his understanding, the film could be watchable from a production perspective. The Clerks director told Cinema Blend that the footage most likely doesn't feature any visual effects and that it isn't a finished movie. Since Zack Snyder went through a phase of constantly revealing new shots, sketches, and unfinished CGI on his Vero account, this isn't surprising at all. But it seems like a recent screening of the film could lead to a wider release. Heroic Hollywood has exclusively learned and confirmed that Zack Snyder held a private screening of his cut of Justice League in the first quarter of 2020 with executives from DC in attendance. According to an individual with knowledge of the situation, something is happening with Snyder's cut of the film and discussions are currently underway. At press time, we do not know if the Snyder Cut is preparing for a special one-time-only fan screening or whether the film will be released on either streaming platforms or home media. However, a theatrical release is highly unlikely. One easy route for DC and Warner Brothers to take would be to put the Snyder Cut on HBO Max when it arrives or even DC Universe. According to Business Insider, there are major concerns regarding the DC-focused streaming service with HBO Max on the horizon. One anonymous former employee says that the feeling is DC Universe will stick around for another year or two, operating on a smaller budget. Meanwhile, HBO Max moves forward with its Jeff Johns-produced Green Lantern series and Justice League Dark from J.J. Abrams. Either streaming service would benefit from the addition of the Snyder Cut. While it's the perfect way of drawing potential subscribers to DC Universe, it would also be a huge selling point for the more expensive option, HBO Max. Remember, the upcoming streaming service will cost $14.99 a month, while DC Universe currently sits at $7.99 a month. But if the Snyder Cut ever does arrive online, what will it include? One of the many criticisms raised over the movie was that Steppenwolf was hardly a compelling villain. 
with the lowly new god only boasting sheer numbers of parademons to really challenge the justice league but in Zack snyder's vision dark side would have made a more prominent appearance across the film the original flashback to the scene where the atlanteans amazonians and the armies of men fight steppenwolf's forces would have used a younger version of dark side the director even revealed a look at the young villain, although he looks a little different without his typical regal outfit. He's wearing his usual bizarre headpiece in the fight, but not the armor. It's a strange wardrobe choice, no doubt, but hey, we're not judging. Ares actor Nick McKinless also revealed there was a fight scene between the God of War and the young new God. He explained in an Instagram comment that they shot an entire sequence with Darkseid, after he trained for four months to get in shape for the role. If that doesn't excite you, we don't know what will. How about a meeting with Wonder Woman? Snyder himself revealed that instead of being killed by parademons at the end of Justice League, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman was meant to behead Steppenwolf. The director also explained that the villain's head would have rolled into a boom tube with Darkseid standing on the other side. The ruler of Apocalypse would have then crushed it under his foot. Very cool. Snyder also confirmed that one of Darkseid's most famous servants, the Sod, was also set to appear in the cut. He's best known for being the master torturer on Apocalypse, and he sounds like a really nice guy. He even confirmed to a fan on Vero that Steppenwolf was meant to report to the Sod. In one of the original trailers, Steppenwolf mentions, quote-unquote, there are no lanterns, no Kryptonians. This was taken from a scene between the two underlings. It's never been mentioned if other notorious Apocalypse characters like Granny Goodness or the Furies could have made an appearance, but we'll get to them later. Darkseid wasn't the only addition to the film, with Snyder confirming that his cut featured another Green Lantern somewhere along the way. When asked whether the Green Lantern that appeared in the theatrical version was also in his cut, the director explained, quote, that's mine, but not THE Green Lantern, end quote. His comments clearly reveal that another member of the Galactic Police Force was meant to appear in the film. But it's not clear whether it was Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart, or even Guy Gardner. Hey, someone give Kilowog another chance in live action, please. But the next time we'll see a Green Lantern in live action is in the HBO Max series, which will reportedly focus on two different lanterns. Surprisingly, another green hero meant to appear in Justice League was Martian Manhunter. Harry Lennox's General Swanwick was originally intended to be revealed as John Johns in a deleted scene from the ending of the movie that saw the hero pretending to be Martha Kent. After Lewis leaves, he would have briefly reverted to his Martian form before quickly transforming back into Swanwick. It's not clear what DC's plans for the Martian Manhunter are for the moment, but for now, David Harewood is killing it in the role over on the CW Supergirl. Although Zack Snyder's five-film arc was scrapped following the disappointing reception to Batman v Superman and Justice League, the team-up movie was originally meant to get two sequels. Justice League 2 would have seen the heroes fail in their attempts to defeat Darkseid, with the villain murdering Lois Lane so that Superman would succumb to the anti-life equation. Sure. Superman got pretty dark during his days in the DCEU, but a Clark Kent without hope? That would have been a devastating blow to the team. And when the villain takes control of Superman, using him to subjugate the entire planet, the Kryptonian quickly becomes one of Darkseid's biggest weapons. From there, fans would have seen the planet turn into a monstrous vision of the villain's own world apocalypse. Yes, this means we would have seen the reality of Bruce's nightmare vision in Batman v Superman. Who doesn't want to see a post-apocalyptic Batman? The third film would have seen the future Bruce Wayne and a broken cyborg try to send the flashback to a closer point in time to Lois' death to warn the team. Snyder didn't reveal how Cyborg was torn in half, but let's face it, it was probably Darkseid. Presumably, they would have succeeded in the third film and defeated the Dark Lord of Apocalypse once and for all. Aside from the Snyder cut, it's extremely likely Darkseid will return on the big screen in the future. Acclaimed comics writer Tom King and the incredibly talented director Ava DuVernay are writing a New Gods movie together for DC and Warner Brothers. The pair have been teasing fans with the project for quite some time, 
and Tom King told Inverse that the film would be a personal adventure that stays true to Jack Kirby's cosmically strange vision. The pair have both cryptically answered the immortal phrase, Dark Side Is, on Twitter when asked if the villain will appear. Let's hope he steps out of the boom too sooner rather than later. Duvernay also teased the inclusion of Big Barter and the Furies, saying that no self-respecting Barter fan could leave the villainous squad out. If Big Barter is around, we'd put money on Granny Goodness and Mr. Miracle not being far behind. Most recently, the director revealed that she's been working on a scene with the All Widow in the film. The All Widow is the queen of the bugs on New Genesis, a paradise-like planet inhabited by new gods like Orion and Light Ray. So while we wait for confirmation on what Warner Brothers' plans are for the Snyder Cut, at least we can be safe in the knowledge that at some point in the future, Darkseid will appear on the big screen thanks to Ava du Well, that is very, very, very interesting. So to reiterate what Umberto has said, he has confirmed that Zack Snyder had a private screening of his Justice League with DC executives there. DC executives, right, don't come to a creative's house or wherever they screened it, right, for nothing. So something is going on. Now, this was early 2020, according to Umberto. I am going to stick my neck on the chopping block sir, and say this is true. Why? Because many moons ago, nearly two years ago, Umberto kept on shouting us down, saying there was no Snyder Cut, it wasn't happening, and we kind of, I suppose the movement cancelled Umberto a long time ago. So, so for someone like this to come out now and say, this is actually happening, um, they've had a screening, he had a screening, a private screening, and DC executives were there, that's a big deal. This is a guy that doesn't make shit up. So we can take this as red. This is massive. This is very important. This is not an announcement. It's not time for me to snap the Justice League Blu-ray in two in front of you yet. But that day is becoming very, very close. I thought that was a really good video. I thought he kind of chapterized and went back and kind of reminded us of everything that's went down. And that's just within uh, the development of the movement, but not stuff that's happened to us personally. You know, we talk about a Snyder Cut book, right? But you just, it's amazing the personal experiences we've had. I mean, when you think about um, R.T. Snyder Cut doing these um, podcasts with, you know, um, released the Snyder Cut um, and Snyder fan, um, pod, uh, you know, YouTubers doing like a round table. And I saw the first episode on YouTube yesterday. And, you know, when people say that our movement is um, toxic, and when you watch that, you just see how nice and how passionate and how friendly these four people are in the first podcast. There's going to be many more. I kind of regret not going for it now, but never mind, never mind. It's done, it's dusted. I just have to live with this and enjoy what the other guys and girls are doing. It's great. It's great. And it's, it's another great thing for the movement. Um, so, so, so basically, earlier this year, probably January, February, definitely before the pandemic, Zach had a private screening with DC executives of his version of Justice League. This is very interesting. So why would they turn up? I think a decision has to be made. We're talking about a four-hour movie here. They have to all decide together. This isn't about where this is going to um, stream or be released or anything like that. This is about how much of this movie do they want to keep? What are they going to do with it? So they watch this movie, the executives and Zach, to decide what can be kept in and what has to be taken out. It's like any movie, right? Before a movie's finished, it's normally, it can be three, four, five hours, and it has to be cut. There's no way we are going to see, I don't think we'll see a three and a half, four hour movie, so it's, elements of it will have to be cut down. So I definitely think we're looking at a three hour a version of Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is very, very exciting. Don't get me wrong, I'd like to see the four hour version. Can't see that happening. Hey, they can cut bits out and elements of that could become Justice League 2. I think from what we're hearing here, we are definitely going to see Zack Snyder's Justice League. The question is now because of the pandemic, the situation has been delayed. There has to be some reshoots. There has to be stuff with um, Martian Manhunter, you know, um, Swanwick stuff has to be shot, of course. We know that already. 
and say it can't just be released. Um, I think from the very beginning, this talk of HBO Max has been interesting. Of course, HBO Max is only going to be available in the United States and Canada, right? And so the rest of the world are going to want to see this movie. It's an odd one, but I think the, the biggest way to make money, and I know they could use it as a kind of way to get more people on HBO Max, and that could be what they do eventually. But I think the biggest, biggest footfall, the biggest money-making thing they can do with this film is just allow people to rent it and buy it via VOD, Blu-ray, and 4K. That's the best thing. I think that's what's going to make money. Do I think a potential release could happen in theatres? I think people are going to be too scared to go to cinemas. It's as simple as that after the pandemic. Theatre, movie theatres are in big trouble. We all know that. We can keep on living in denial and say, yeah, but I love the theatrical movie experience. It doesn't matter whether you like it or not. They're in trouble. Are they going to get enough bums on seats? And they have to remove seats now for social distancing. as well. So it's very difficult. So there's no point talking about theatres now. It's about VOD, it's about buying, rental, you know, physical hard copies. And I think this is what's going to happen. Because this thing, my friends, this baby is happening. And it's happening because of you, because of me, because of Zack Snyder, because of everyone in this movement, right? Because of the guys in that R.T. Snyder Cut podcast as well. You know, it's, it is so big, so massive. It's such a special story. And... I can't wait to see this film. I can't wait to snap the Justice League Blu-ray into in front of you. But I tell you what, this is a very, very exciting development, which I'm sure we'll still be talking about in tomorrow's DCEU Daily as well. So I shall see you then. Comment down below, like, share and subscribe. See you tomorrow on the DCEU Daily. See you again soon.